Dude, where are you? I reached. It's already nine. Can you make it fast? the delay bro shall we start now bro finally i got the vacuum cleaner i'll clean the studio bro we'll go for the shoot shall we start okay bro rolling and action this is the beauty of sound in the early days movies didn't start off with immersive sound it was just visual drama people liked it but as days passed people started losing interest so to make it more interesting a musician sat nearby the theater screen played music along with the visuals to help people connect to the visual drama then as days passed sound made its way to theaters by means of speakers sound is actually created by vibration of particles in the air around us and here the speaker produces sound let's see how a speaker actually works see when i play music the electric signals from the amplifier is sent to this circular coil these electrical signals create both electric field and magnetic field around the coil since the direction of the electric signals keep changing the direction of the electric and magnetic fields also changes continuously now when i bring a magnet close to this coil the magnetic field of the magnet interacts with the coil's changing magnetic field Because of this the coil experiences continuous attractions and repulsions as a result the coil vibrates these vibrations cause the surrounding air particles to vibrate as well producing sound so initially in a theater one speaker was placed at the front called mono most of the movie dialogues were played through this speaker people really loved the experience but let's say there's a scene where a helicopter passes the screen This mono speaker wasn't able to produce the effect at an audio level. So two other speakers were introduced at the front left and front right side of the screen called stereo. This stereo made movie sound even better. See, to understand how mono and stereo work together, you must know what a channel is and how it works. A channel is the sound that goes to a specific speaker. Each set of speaker is given its own channel. 
While mixing sound for a movie, the sound engineer decides which sound goes to which channel. They use special softwares like DAW to mix sound properly. So in the system with mono and stereo, there are three channels, one mono and two stereo channels. With mono playing the dialogues and stereo playing the background music, sound effects, etc. So, if there's a chasing scene where cars are moving across the screen or there's a fight sequence, it would sound like and this is a two-channel system. So to make things more interesting and give a whole lot better experience, surround sound technology was Hey! And speakers were added to the left and right. What are you guys doing? We are explaining. Uh, we are explaining? Then what am I here for? Get out! Then surround sound was introduced into cinemas. That is, apart from the speakers on the front, speakers were introduced on the sides and back too. Let me tell you something interesting before surround sound. In 1940, a film Fantasia was released. Here, sound mixing was done manually using the groundbreaking Fantasound system. Disney engineers recorded different sounds for the movie and then these tracks were manually mixed by adjusting the levels and timing using physical controls as the movie was played. But things changed as surround sound emerged. In surround sound systems, each speaker is given its own channel like front left, front right, surround left, surround right and a rear speaker. Each channel plays the sound it's assigned during the mixing process. When you're making a movie, the sound engineer mixes the audio based on how many channels are available. This helps the sound engineer to place different sounds in different directions. So when you're in a theater, you actually feel like you're inside the movie. This setup is called 5.1 surround sound. The 5 stands for 5 main channels. Front left, front right, center, surround left and surround right speakers. The point 1 is for a special speaker called a subwoofer, which plays low sounds like deep rumbles, explosions or drum beats because regular speakers struggle in producing low frequency sounds. One important thing to know is that a channel does not refer to the number of speakers. It refers to the number of audio inputs each speaker receives. A channel can have any number of speakers and all the speakers in that channel will play the same sound. So even if you try to increase the number of speakers, there will be no difference after a certain point, just the loudness would increase. In order to improve the experience, more channels were added. That's how 5.1 evolved into 7.1. In a 7.1 audio system, you still have the main channels. Front left, front right, center, surround left and surround right. But two new rear channels were added. Rear left and rear right. However, there was still something missing. The effect of sound coming from above, like rain, thunder or sounds from above you in a movie. To fix this, two additional channels were added at the top. Top left and top right. This turned the system into 7.1.2, where 0.2 refers to the top channels. Then they kept adding channels. 7.1 evolved further into 9.1. Another problem is that once the sound mix is done, it can't be changed. For example, if a movie is mixed for 7.1 and then if it is played in a 5.1 system, it won't sound as good or immersive. Also, you cannot play sounds between speakers unless you have a separate channel for that. This limits how real or 3D the audio feels. We are in Dolby. Now, how is Dolby Atmos better? Unlike the traditional surround sound audio being logged to channels, Dolby Atmos changes the game by using audio objects instead of fixed channels. Each sound source is considered as an object and will be placed at any point. And when played back through any Dolby Atmos system, regardless of the number of speakers used, it will adapt and play the sound accordingly. Say, a helicopter buzzes across the sky. Here, the sound can be assigned as an object on the software and the movements can be given to it in the 3D space. A total of 118 sound objects is the limit. So, under this limit, any number of sound inputs can be mixed on Dolby Atmos. Each object has a location data. Using this, the sound is played accordingly. 
The system knows where the sound should come from in 3D space. Left, right, behind, above or anywhere in between based on the location data. This means if a bird flies overhead in a movie, the sound can literally move above you. Atmos adapts to your speaker setup, whether you have 5 or 15. It figures out where to play each sound for the best effect. This feels like way more natural and immersive, just like you're inside the scene. And for Dolby audio to be decoded, you need a Dolby Atmos AV receiver. This receiver will decode the sound and allot the sounds based on the speakers connected to the receiver. The algorithm measures, simulates the differences, then applies them to stereo sound so it feels like 3D even with just two tiny earphones. So when a bee flies overhead, it's just two tiny speakers faking like pros inside your ears. Is it okay? Okay. okay. What now? 